Test 4. This is the IELTS listening test. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four parts. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to part one. Part one. You will hear a student from overseas phoning the student accommodation office of a college in the UK for some information. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. College Accommodation Office, Darren speaking. How may I help you? Oh, good morning. I am starting at the college in September and need to find some accommodation. Right. Well, there is a list of options. The first one is to live on campus and that would be a single room. How much would that cost? Well, it depends. You'll be expected to cover £3,276 for a standard room for the year. That's just for a room with a wash basin. And it'll be £3,834 if you want a regular suite equipped with a small bathroom. I see. That's a bit over what I expected. It does include heating, which is quite a saving because energy costs can be high these days, especially in winter. Hmm. Does it include meals as well? No. All our rooms are self-catering now, but there is a shared kitchen on each floor where you can cook if you want to, or there are plenty of places to eat out on campus. OK. And you mentioned that is the price for the whole year? Well, you pay annually, but actually, it's just for 36 weeks. It doesn't include holidays. You'll have to vacate the room then. Oh, um, I need somewhere for the holidays. It'll be a long way home and the flights are too expensive. Well, there is another option. Several families who work at the college or have children studying here offer overseas students a room in their homes. Oh, tell me about it. We call this arrangement Home Welcome, and we've still got a few places left at the moment. You pay £150 per week, and that includes breakfast, a packed lunch and dinner, as well as heating. Is there a contract? Do you have to stay for the whole year? No, it's flexible. Hmm, it sounds perfect, but I'm not sure. I want to be a little more independent. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Is there somewhere available off campus? Yes, you can rent a property in town privately. You might want to rent a room in a shared house. You'd have a room and a shared kitchen and bathroom with other tenants. What about if I don't want to share? 
you can get what we call a studio. They are often relatively small, but they'll have everything you need. Right. How much would those two options be? Well, prices vary depending on which part of the town the property is in. Generally speaking, the cheapest is around £275 a month for each student. Oh, that's not too bad. Yes, but it can also be up to £490 and you still have to pay all your other bills. What sort of amount would I be looking at for those? Last year, students were paying on average about £43 per month for gas and electricity. This year, it would probably be somewhere in the region of £48. That's a lot. Yes, they've gone up quite a bit. And on top of that, you have to pay for water, which would probably be around £9. That didn't occur to me. And I guess I'd have to pay for transportation too. That's right. Most of these properties are quite a long way from the college. Oh, it just gets worse and worse. What's the minimum contract for this type of accommodation? Six months. And you have to pay a deposit up front. But of course, you can stay there over the holidays. That's true. And you'd have to provide references. They want two from someone in this country. I see. That's not a problem. If you prefer this accommodation, we can't find the property for you. You'd have to contact the real estate agent who manages the property for the owner. Right, thanks. I'd like to see what's available privately. Could you give me the real estate agent details? That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part one.